So after many long months of saying I'll do it, I finally decided to update my classic Palm video. I think the old one was like two years old and it just didn't fit the quality that, uh, well, I have for this channel nowadays. So I finally decided to update it. And since the new live stream lecture series, since the color change series is finally over, I can get into, well, palming. So that's the new series. And so think of this as some sort of prerequisite. But finally, without any sort of, uh, like, you know, long intro, we can let's get into the history section for the classic palm. Now there's a reason why this move is called the classic palm, because I believe this is actually the first method for, well, palming a card, for concealing a card inside of your palm while it's seemingly empty. So most moves that I discuss on this channel are what, like 50 to 100 years old? Well, that's because that's really when magic literature actually took off. That's really when magic as a whole is like, yeah, let's start putting things in print. Let's start, you know, getting our name out there. This move is far older than that. This move's first publication is like, <laughs> is like a dinosaur compared to all of those. So this move was actually first published 284 years ago. That's basically 300 years at this point, back in 1740. So <laughs> this is extremely old. And it was in a book, uh, it's called in French, Nouvelle Recreation Physique et Mathematique. So that's new uh, recreations or new activities, I guess would be the best way to translate it. Uh, phys uh, physical, act wait, new uh, recreational and physical and math activities, I guess. That's, I guess that's the best way to translate it by Gil Edm Guyot. I think that's how you pronounce it. Ah, my French is so rusty, so I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> but every other method of concealing a card was published basically later than this move. So this move is rightfully called the classic palm. Other people just call, call it the card palm, but I think this move actually deserves the name the classic palm. And you know, the rest is history. Everyone just sort of puts out its own like, you know, touches on the move and and it's been basically used everywhere since then. I mean, card to pocket, card to cross, card to, uh, card to box, uh, like used in some slides as well, like undertow. So, you know, the rest is history. It's just been everywhere. And this is truly deserving of the name of classic palm. So how I'll proceed with the rest of crediting uh, concerning like all the touches and whatnot is that, well, because they're a bit more niche, I would say, and diverge a bit from the classic or the normal handling of the classic palm, I'll just name drop and credit each magician in the respective sections, because if I just credit them here, well, no one will remember them. And also, you know, it's just sort of, it, it, it would make categorizing everything a bit too difficult. So I'll, I'll name drop things as we go along. But without further ado, let's get into the classic the, or the original classic palm. So I'm using studs because, you know, why uh, why not? Thin cards for a classic move. So you can either start off palming in your left hand or your right hand, it really doesn't matter, but I highly recommend you to actually just learn palming in both hands because, well, that's essential. You need to learn how to palm in both hands. So I recommend you to get used to one hand first and then just uh, just start, sort of start palming with the other as well. So the basic mechanics of the original classic palm is relatively simple. So this is how you would generally palm a card. You have the top corner of this card actually pressed up against the inner side of the pad of your pinky over here. You also have the bottom corner pressed up against the fat of your thumb over here. And you just gently apply some pressure so then the card is actually just bowed. It's just bent, right? And so together they actually held, uh, they actually hold this card with diagonal pressure. So you can see that this card is bending along of these two corners like so. And that's, what ca that's what's causing this card to bow. The other fingers are just there, just gently just laying there and they're bending along the curvature of this card. So you notice when you bow this card, it becomes bent. These, your fingers are following this bent over here. All right. So notice how I said gently, if you actually try to actively bend this card and now all your fingers are aligned like so, 
you end up with something that's called a monkey's paw. But I think that it's more uh, it's more appropriate to call it a Lego man hand. So you end up with something like this. You don't want this, all right? So you really want this diagonal pressure and just have your other fingers there, just laying there gently, all right? Keyword is gently. So, you know, don't, don't do this. This looks extremely bad, so relax. And that's the basic mechanics of the original classic palm. And for their hand, it's the exact same. It's again, the inner pad, uh, the inner side of your pad of your pinky, as well as the fat of your thumb. And that is the basic mechanics of the classic palm, just like so. All right, so you notice that my fingers are actually kind of bony, and so there's actually windows over here. But that's fine because the shadows of your fingers will actually hide the card well. It's just because my light is actually shining directly into my fingers that's making it uh, sort of a uh, sort of see-through, let's just say. So uh, I'll get rid of this card because it's kind of bent <laughs> to hell now. But on the other hand, if you really want to bend your cards, then this next palm is for you. This is a very Guy Hollingworth-esque palm, but I've also seen this palm uh, before Guy, uh, Guy Hollingworth. So I've seen this palm with uh, with people like Bob White and, and people beforehand, all right? So you have your card in a classic palm, and now you're going to curl in your fingers, but you don't curl them all in uh, until they're equal. So the problem with the monkey's paw or the Lego man hand is that these fingers are all curled in equally, which makes it look really bad, right? What you have to do is that you curl in these fingers until they're in a diagonal line. So you curl in your pinky the most, and then you curl in your uh, ring finger a bit less, and then your middle finger, and then your ring finger, and you curl them in until you have this curvature over here with your hand, like so, all right? So you notice that they're not completely flat. They're actually on a diagonal line, just like so. Your thumb just rests there and touches your index finger. So now this is the complete look for your palm, just like so. So it's completely different from a Lego man hand, which is this. This is somewhat more more curled in and you can see that it it sort of imitates the um the look of a just sort of relaxed hand so if i actually get this uh, to get this card out of my palm for a moment so this palm in general is meant to emulate a relaxed hand so notice that i have my hand over here and if i just relax my hand this hand naturally curls in just like so all right so just relax it so it's meant to emulate this look. Your hand generally, when you relax it, has a tendency to curl in, which is really nice because this palm is meant to emulate this exact pose, all right? So I find myself using this more and more just because it just looks that good. One flaw of this move, however, is that you might notice how bent this card is after I got it out of palm. You can see that it's actually so much more bent compared to this card, which I uh, bent beforehand. Right, so you can see that this is this is so much more bowed compared to the other one. So, especially with older cards that don't tend to have any sort of snappiness, don't have any sort of a uh, snap to them, they will remain in this bowed form. Uh, a lot more than uh, than these relatively fresher deck of cards. So if you're using an older deck, there's really only one circumstance that you can use this uh, this sort of palm in, and that is card to pocket. Because once you actually extract this card from your pocket, you can unbend the card as you extract it from your pocket, causing it to sort of lose its bowed shape a bit uh, along the way. So. That's uh, that's one downside of this palm, but generally, if you just stand there and you have this nice relaxed hand, this looks really nice. This looks like you have nothing in your hand, you're just relaxing, all right? So that's one, one reason why I actually really enjoy this palm.
So this is the one that I used the most. This is the classic palm that I used the most. This is based off of the work of Ernest Eric, Tony Chang, and Dennis Kim. All right. And I know Andrew Frost also does something similar because I, I also modified some of that work. And so you're going to start off in a classic palm, just like so. But now what you're going to do is you're going to curl in your ring finger so that is now applying pressure onto the card as well. And now you can just release pressure with your pinky. So now you have the card in a modified classic palm, which just doesn't look exactly uh, the best. But notice how there's still a diagonal pressure on the card. Except rather than, being it, uh, rather than being from corner to corner, you have it on the short edge of the card to the opposite corner, but it's still a diagonal. It's just a shorter diagonal. This has numerous, uh, numerous advantages, which I'll go into later in my live streams. But one thing that you can instantly tell is that, well, with this sort of palm, you can actually curl in your pinky. And this gives it a lot, a, a, a bit more of an open look because now, you have, well, you have, your, your pinky isn't like bent. It, it's sort of curled in now, which gives it a more open look. And you might be worried about the ankle, uh, angles rather. I don't know why I said ankles, but you don't have to worry about that because even though it's in this position, it's not flashing. And the reason why is because, well, I have good angle control. And so as long as your audience's line of sight doesn't go past your middle finger, so you can see my middle finger is here, as long as it doesn't go past this particular section over here, then you don't have any issue of flashing. You don't have to worry about flashing it, all right? So if I tilt my hand a bit more, you can start seeing it, but if my middle finger slash over, sort of overlapping into my ring finger is hitting directly into the audience's line of sight, you don't have to worry about it, all right? Your angles are clear. What this means also is that you can have wider windows. So if I have, uh, this is the general line of sight for the palm. So if I have wider windows into this, it still doesn't matter because I still have good angles with this classic palm. You can see that now, <laughs> this is hella, this is hella exposed, right? But you know, it's still, it's still fine because as long as this segment is hitting the audience's line of sight, it's still okay. So this is one advantage of this classic palm. All right, so this gives it a more uh, sort of open look uh, compared to compared to this sort of classic palm. All right, so that's just uh, that's just how I like the classic palm things. If you still like uh, the the old school way of classic palming cards, then go ahead. But I just find that this is a lot better for for my hands in particular because when I close my fingers for a normal classic palm, this corner actually sticks out from my hand. So I don't want to use the original classic palm, but if your hands are good enough for that, then please go ahead. But you know, for, for people with bony fingers or for smaller hands, I believe that resorting to this sort of palm is better for us in general, because you don't have to, well, you don't have to worry about angles, but you don't have to worry about windows. You also don't have to worry about your hand size. This just works. But again, you have to have angle management. Next thing that we'll go into is the broken palm. So this is an Alan Ackerman thing, which he taught on the Advanced Card Control Volume 1, which is on palming. But on further research, I actually discovered that N. Marlowe has something similar in, in, um, in Marlowe's Magazine Volume 5 back in 1984. It's, uh, it's not really described as its own technique. It's actually, uh, this palm was actually described in, uh, in something under the section of new palms. So I'll just keep calling it the broken palm because, well, there's not really any name in particular for this palm. So you're going to start off in a classic palm, but now you're going to curl in your index to apply pressure. And now you can also release pressure with your pinky finger. So now you're holding the card with vertical pressure between of your index and the fat of your thumb, just like so. So this is what it looks like from the back. So my pinky is completely free and only my index and the fat of my thumb is holding 
this card. So this may seem like an odd position, but it allows you to do quite a few things. The first one is, well, it allows you to rest your hand on the table. So notice that when you actually rest your hand on the table, it's either completely flat, which is fine, but it's, it's a problem for us magicians in particular if we have our hand completely flat against the table because, well, uh, that's uh, that makes it a bit harder for us for uh, to, to conceal some uh, some cards in our hand, right? Because if it's just completely flat, it, the card tends to drop out of our hand. The other position that we find ourselves usually on the table is just having our, our fingers just slightly curled in, particularly our index finger. This palm in particular is meant to emulate that. So we have our, our, our card in a broken palm and we just set on the table. Notice how similar it looks to just a regular relaxed hand with the index curled in. That's what this hand, uh, this, that's what this palm is meant to emulate. There's also another thing uh, that, uh, that I can do, and that is it allows you to grab things. So when you tend to grab things with a palm card, you can actually look like a Lego man. And as we've discussed before, that's not exactly ideal. So if you just curl in your index and hold this card in a broken palm, now you can grab things in a biddle grip without looking like some sort of weird Lego man. So you do this, this is weird, but if you do this, now it looks a lot nicer. All right, so this is just a sort of biddle grip, uh, biddle grip palm, let's just say. <laughs> so this is a lot nicer. You can even dribble cards with it and it's still in a broken palm. So that's, uh, that's a couple of ad advantages with the broken palm compared to the classic palm. So as a little bonus, I'll teach you something in which I learned from Jeremy Griffith. Uh, this is actually something which allows you to unbend a card. So you can notice here that all these cards are bent after I'm done palming them, which is uh, not ideal because, well, people can notice that your cards are no longer flat. They're, um, they're bent. <laughs> so what you're going to do is that you're going to hold the card in the classic palm, and then you're going to apply some pressure with your ring finger which now allows you to change into the modified classic palm, all right? Next, you're going to move your index and pinky around of the card, so then they sort of wrap around of it, and they contact the long edges of the card, just like so. Next, you're going to actually just use your fingers to sort of just pull this card backwards, all right? So you're going to pull this card backwards until it bends just like so. So it sort of looks like you're doing a reverse back palm, if that makes sense. Next, you're going to flex the fat of your thumb. So you're going to flex it and this causes this corner to actually bend backwards. All right. And so this is just a quick little squeeze. And what you'll notice is that traditionally, a card causes these two corners to actually bend. What you're doing now is you're actually unbending these two corners, right? I'm wrapping my pinky around it, I'm bending it back, and I'm using the fan of my thumb to unbend this corner as well. So this, this motion in general is just to give a counter bend to the bend that the classic palm gives you. And so this isn't a miracle method. Your cards will still have a slight work to them. I mean, just look at this card. I mean, I know these cards are like old and so they're they're kind of not as snappy or whatever, but still, all right? So this is just a quick method of unbending your cards. And yeah, hope you uh, hope you enjoy them. But also, uh, I, I don't really recommend you to sort of do it in the full view. So if you're doing like a card to pocket, or whatever, then just give them a quick unbend and then give them the card, all right? So just so then it doesn't look weird. So <laughs> imagine you're just palming a card and you're just like, oh, here's your card. That doesn't look nice. So just, just be aware of when you should use it, all right?
So here are just a couple of additional notes regarding the classic palm. Remember, context is everything, especially in magic. So don't try to palm a card and then try and overprove it by showing that your hands are empty or whatever. That's just stupid, right? Palming is an act of sort of relaxation, right? You give them the deck, you have the card palmed, ask them to shuffle the deck, right? It's supposed to be relax it's supposed to be nonchalant don't try to make a big deal out of like yeah my hands are empty yeah everything is so clean it's just here you go right and that's it that's supposed to be it one of the big things about palming is that it should feel as if nothing has happened and you're just carrying on with the with the rest of your day so the reason why palming is supposed to be this nonchalant action is because well you're not supposed to feel like you're doing a move. You're just sort of just carrying on, if that makes sense. Because the moment the audience member, because the moment you feel like you're doing a move, the audience members will also feel like you're also doing a move. And that's sort of not good because, well, you're going to get caught red-handed. So that's not preferable. So make sure that at the end of the day, everything is just sort of nonchalant and relaxed and whatever. So generally, I don't hold a palm card for that long. I just palm a card and I do what I need to do with it. And then that's that's it, all right? But again, be familiar with the context of your effects and know when to use palming because I think that will help a lot. So yeah. So if you're interested in palming and how to use it and what are some methods to get into a classic palm, there are a lot of resources out there, but here are just some that I think I, I thoroughly enjoy. So Practical Card Palming by Bob White, Ephemera by Dennis Kim, Lectra Flat Number 9 by Andrew Frost, The Art of Palming by Javi Benitez, Carney on Palming by John Carney, Express as a Card Table 2021 by John Galsworthy. He's the uh, very popular uh, social media guy known for palming, but I also think that he's a phenomenal sleight of hand artist overall, so you can you should definitely check out John Galsworthy's work. The Palm Project by Eddie McColl, by Forces Unseen by Ernest Eric, written by Stephen Minch, The Card Magic of Paul LaPaul by Paul LaPaul. And so yeah, that's uh, that's basically all of the uh, resources that I can recommend you for palming. Uh, this is just the sources that I generally go back to when I when I struggle with palming, when I need some some sort of refreshers about palming. But there are so many there are so many more sources for palming that you know it's basically impossible for me to put it all on this list. So I highly recommend you to just look up more resources on palming. But you know if you want any place to start you can go ahead and check out the links in the comments down below because those are my favorite sources. So uh, yeah. Like every tool in magic or just every tool in general, the classic palm should not be abused. It shouldn't be overused, over relied on. There's a right place and there's a right time for everything. And this applies to palming as well, right? You shouldn't use palming for, for everything. Like you shouldn't use palming for like an ACR or whatever, right? You should only use palming when the uh, when the effect is appropriate for it. So yeah, I just see when when people when people learn a new slay or whatever, they just tend to just use the heck out of it. They're like, yeah, let me just put it here, let me put it here, let me put it here, and I mean that's cool. It's it's really nice to see people tinkering with some stuff, but tinkering should remain tinkering sometimes. You shouldn't try and forcefully just uh, plug it in into real life situations as well. Right? You should always look for the most effective or efficient route for some things. And sometimes palming is the most efficient and effective route, but other times it's also not. So I highly encourage you to tinker around with it, but I also don't encourage you to forcefully plug it in into everything, especially if you're performing or whatever. All right. So for personal use or tinkering, you might discover some stuff, but Keep it, keep it simple, all right, for, for performance, all right? But that's about it. Yeah, that's going, to, uh, that's going to be about it for me for the Classic Palm. Hope you guys enjoyed this updated video on the Classic Palm. And yeah, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you guys next time.